Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make an edit mode for your Microsoft Access Forms to prevent users from accidentally editing or deleting records. Today's question comes from Marcel in Brooklyn, New York, one of my Platinum members. Marcel asks, is there any way I can keep my users from accidentally editing a record? It happens all the time. People hit a key and change a name or some other value, and they just scroll on by and don't even realize what they did. Can I force them to have to click an edit button before they can make changes? It's not a matter of security. I trust everyone. They just make careless mistakes. I'm actually guilty of this myself all the time. I'm going through some customer records. I'm doing whatever. I answer the phone. Oh, that's funny. I don't answer the phone. I do some other stuff. I come back. I'm not paying attention. I just hit a character, didn't realize it. And then I moved to another record. And guess what I just did? I just changed that customer's first name to D. I've done this a million times myself. And yeah, I get asked this a lot by people. So what we can do is we can lock this form. Okay. There are properties in the form itself. All right, if you go under the, the properties for the form right there and then go to the data tab, you've got allow additions, allow deletions, and allow edits. If you change these to no, then the user can't make any changes in here or deletions or additions. Now, if you do that, you need a way to allow the user to be able to turn those things back on again. So for that, we need a teeny tiny bit of VBA programming. That's why back here on the title slide, I got this marked as a developer lesson. Very, very tiny bit of VBA code. If you've never done any VBA programming before, don't worry. Don't panic. It's real easy. I'll show you everything you need to know. Go watch this video first. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll get you up to speed. Also, while you're at it, go watch my disallow editing data video. This shows you about the allow edits, allow deletes, and allow additions properties that I just mentioned. I talk about them in more detail. And go watch my on current event video. This is an event that fires when you open a form or when you move from record to record. We're going to use this to turn that edit mode back off. All these videos are free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those first. You'll find links down below in the description under the video down underneath. You got to click on something to find it and then come on back when you watch those. Okay, so here I am back in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download off my website, by the way. And again, open up the customer form, go into the form properties and turn this allow additions to know, allow deletions to know, allow edits to know, or whatever you want to do. If you want to still allow them to make additions, that's fine. All right. Usually it's deletions and edits that people are worried about, you know, accidental careless edits or deletions. All right. Now close the properties. What we're going to do is we're going to create a button. I'm just going to copy one of these existing buttons that I have. Copy, paste, control C, control V, put it down here in the bottom. I'm going to change the caption to edit. I'm going to open up its properties and give it a good name, not command 30. Let's go to the all tab. Whoop, a bit too small there. We'll change the name to edit button, edit BTN. I like to have all my buttons end in BTN. That's just me. Now we're going to put a little teeny tiny bit of code in here. Right click, go to build event. That'll open up your code builder. The visual basic editor should appear. And we're going to put a couple lines of code in here. What we're basically going to do is turn those properties on and off, right? Allow edits and allow deletions. Now, those are properties of the current form. And we reference the current form by calling it me. All right. Me means whatever form you're on. Okay. So me dot, it's a list of all the properties of this form. We want allow edits. There it is. Allow edits equals true. When I click this button, I want to allow edits. Very similarly, me.allow deletions, there it is, equals true as well. And again, that's up to you. And then we'll give the user some visual clue that they're now in edit mode. So we're going to change the caption of the form. That's what appears up top here, right in the title bar. We'll say me.caption equals whatever the form's normal caption is, let's say customers, and then a dash, and then, you know, edit mode or whatever you want to have real big like that. So that'll appear up top. All right, save it. Go back to your form. Let's close the form. Open it back up again. Okay. Now, if I try to make any changes, look, I'm clicking, I'm clicking, I'm clicking, I'm clicking. I'm typing on the keyboard. Nothing's happening, right? Because allow edits is set to false. But now when I click on my edit button, now I can go and I'm in edit mode. See the caption changed? And now I can come over here and click and type and do stuff. Okay. See that? And that prevents the user from making any careless mistakes. 
Now, we need a way to turn that back off. I think the easiest way is simply when the user closes the form, it's obviously going to revert back to its original state. But if they move from record to record, the on current event will fire. And so we can use that event to turn edit mode back off. All right. So if they if they make changes to that record, great. But then if they leave that record anyway, it puts them back into non edit mode. And again, that's completely up to you. You can leave it on if you want to. I don't care. Right. Uh, design view. Go to the forms properties. Go to the events for the form and find on current. That's why I wanted you to watch that on current video. Okay. This will run anytime you move from record to record. Anytime a record loads, basically, including the first record that loads when the form opens. All right. Now we can just basically copy this code. Copy. Paste it down here and change these guys around to false. False. And then put the caption back to whatever you wanted to say. And this will run whenever the form opens and you move from record to record. So basically, whatever you got set in the properties in the form itself don't matter because this code's going to overwrite that. All right. Save it. Close it. Close it. Close it. Save changes. Yes. Open it up. By default, tap, 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 tap. Nothing happening. Edit mode. All right. I can change my name now. If I move to another record, look at that. Edit mode goes off. So now I'm tapping, I'm tapping, I'm clicking, I'm clicking. Nothing happens until I click edit again. And there you go. Edit mode. And that's how you can turn it on and off. Now, can you do something like ask for a password if they go into edit mode? Sure. You can require a password using an input box. I've got a separate video where I show you how to do that. Very easy to implement. Want to make it a little fancier? Check this out. All right, we got an edit button over here. Click. I changed the background color, changed the caption over here. Okay, and I got a cancel button. So if I make some changes in here and I decide I don't want those, I can click cancel and those go away. Plus, subforms have to be treated specially. There's some extra stuff you got to do with subforms if you have a subform on your form. How do you do all that crazy stuff? Well, that is all covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's well over 300 of them now. I'll show you how to change the background color between regular mode and edit mode. There's some extra stuff we got to do with subforms. We'll change that edit button so it says save after you click on it. So when they go to edit, that button now changes to save. I know a lot of users look for that. It'll also save the record like access normally does if they, if they close the form. But... Now they have a button they can click on that goes save, so they're not worried about that. I know a lot of people who are used to like Word and Excel, they want to be able to manually save stuff. They don't get that access automatically saves every record. And we'll make the cancel button so they can just cancel any changes if they're not happy with it. So what are you waiting for? Join today. Again, silver members and up get access to my entire library of extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases. But that is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes.
These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.